General Hammond's going to present us with the medals at a private ceremony back at the base. Mm. Well, it's the honor that matters, whether I can be there or not. Dad. I have cancer, Sam. What? Lymphoma. That's bad. Well, it's not good. But it's not the worst, don't you worry. I'm going to be around for a while. I was hoping to stick around long enough to see you become an astronaut. Sweetheart, I don't care what it is you do in that mountain. Nothing in the world can live up to the chance of actually going to space. Not for you. It's something you've wanted your whole life. Let's talk a little bit uh, more about kind of uh, your characters and your interactions uh, with some of the uh, other actors on the show. Um, a lot of your stuff was with Amanda. Amanda. And, uh, tell us Amanda. what that was like. What's it like working with, with Amanda? Um, Amanda is exceptional in so many ways. I mean, Amanda goes out of her way to make everyone comfortable. She knows everyone's name on the crew. She's always up and positive and lovely, lovely woman. I, I remember the first day uh, on set, um, you know, our first days on set, we can be a little nervous or something. And uh, I was going up a couple of times. And Amanda just, uh, we were talking, she just grabbed my hand, you know? And she, and, and it was so comforting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And it settled me. And, uh, and we got along just wonderfully. We really almost had that kind of father-daughter relationship. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember Brad, uh, coming up to me and saying, you know, uh, Amanda, one of the reasons you're on the show is because Amanda likes you so much, mm. <laughs> you know, uh, working together. Uh, and and uh, I owe her uh, a debt of gratitude because I think, uh, I think uh, her presence and her belief in our relationship and everything uh, uh, gave me a few more episodes before they killed me. You know? <laughs> uh, they might have uh, wanted to get rid of me prior to that, but Amanda was steadfast in her loyalty, and uh, and we had we did some wonderful work together, I, Absolutely. I, I think. And uh, so Amanda will always be, uh, in my heart, uh, uh, one of the most uh, beautiful people I've ever mm. worked with. I mean, she's just a lovely person. Mm. So. Dad, have you ever heard of the Stargate program? No. Is that one of your satellites? I don't work with satellites, Dad. That was just a cover. No kidding. I never would have guessed. So tell me, what do you do that's so great you don't want me to get you into the astronaut program? Well, this is going to be a lot for you to take in at once. Stop beating around the bush. What do you do? I travel to other planets much farther away than any astronaut goes. So you're not going to tell me the truth here? She is telling you the truth, Jacob. She goes to other planets. What, like in simulations? No, in reality. We discovered a piece of alien technology. It can send us to thousands of planets all over the galaxy. You're not kidding, are you? No. Holy Hannah. You know, it's it really is uh, exceptional when you have someone that really, uh, truly cares about yeah. you as, as a person. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, your your relationship on screen with Amanda was was undeniable. Thank you. Uh, and Thank very you. genuine and Thank very you. heartfelt. And, uh, but she it, it would extend that, mm -hmm. you know, after the cameras stopped rolling. Oh, yeah. Yes. Before oh, yeah. the cameras oh, rolled. Yeah. You know, uh, just her uh, general uh, concern for other people's well being mm. and, and making sure everyone was okay. And she know? was a problem solver. Yeah. And she was yeah. so technically uh, the camera and smart and uh, never ever, you know, uh, being obnoxious about it. She was just mm -hmm. smart and sweet and mm -hmm. knew what to do and and uh, uh, she, she set a great example uh, 
for me and I think for everyone on the set. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. yeah. Now, uh, to compare and contrast uh, to that, uh, unfortunately, most of your scenes were with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't want to go there. I, I really didn't. I just wanted to see. We're, we're really being honest. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's a lovely relationship. You know, I, I was telling I was telling Carmen just for one of the one of the sayings, you know, that I have written that every job is a rose. <laughs> With its thorns, <laughs> in, in, with its thorns is his little, little, little letters. Tilk is strong, stronger than I. Oh, I don't know. You're the fittest 137-year-old I know. Perhaps, but I'm nearing the end of my time. Kel Noreen is more and more difficult. The symbiote I carry within will mature within two years. It will be my last. Why? Even if I could procure another, the new symbiote would reject me. It is how old warriors die. Well, maybe we can find some way to help you. Eh? Life for the sake of life means nothing. Neither for me, nor for Tilk. Do you understand? I think I do. Either he will return to us as we know him, or he will not return. Amanda was the welcome wagon. Mm. You know, yeah. she truly, yeah, truly so. was. She, you know, she was great. But, uh, but I go back to what I, in terms of you, I often get asked this, you know, and I, I, I'll own up to it. I actually thought you went easy on me, in terms of extracurricular <laughs> madness. You, you actually were really, really, really kind. You never pulled my chin that much. We had fun. Always right. had fun. But you know, I, some of the other stuff I was. <laughs> I would watch you. And it was such a joy, uh, again, going back to when we uh, uh, first met without words, because, you know, you can put two actors in a room for hours trying to make this connection, mm -hmm. and it's just may, may right. not be there. And then, but just to come into a set and say, okay, so who, who's, who's my life? Who would I give my life mm -hmm. for on this set? Who mm -hmm. is, what is it? And then to see you, it, it, it was easy. It was, and I truly mean that. It was truly, truly yeah. wonderful. And then I, the other thing I really sort of caught on, uh, but you, you know, actors, we tend to complain a little bit. Mm. I don't understand. <laughs> you know, but, and what I mean by that is, you know, I, where you want your character to go, where you want to do this, or he should do this, or she wouldn't do that. And the thing I admired about you is you'd come up with ideas, but then you'd write them, is the additional thing of going from the great performance and, and taking control of, uh, of your world. Mm -hmm. So if you want your world explored, you don't wait for somebody else to do it, you, you do it. Right. And you wrote those wonderful scripts and uh, they always included me. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I always knew. But uh, no, it's always been great. Our, our, uh, that relationship, I, I still you know, cherish it, it. You know, it brings great emotion mm -hmm. to me and, mm -hmm. and, and stuff, but uh, there's a, one of the things I remember is there was that, I forget what episode it was, when we were all on the beach. Oh. Uh, and we were uh, exchanging. Uh, what, what was happening? The, the one where we were on the beach. The be oh, that was Changeling. Was that changeling? was Changeling. Yeah. It was the real reality when he's going back yeah. and forth between dreams and we find out where you really are. Hold on, old man. Anyway, when we were uh, doing symbios. Now, what I remember about that particular, that really wonderful thing, it was they were waiting for, it was golden hour, they were waiting for the light mm. river by the Fraser River. Mm. Um, and uh, it, it was maybe five seasons in or something, but there was debate of whether we were going to come back. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, whether, whether the show was going to, and I would, you know, I'd, I'd listen and there were some other folks, oh, they're gonna come back. no, they're not going to come back. And I'm just watching the river and the salmon are running. Mm. And so I'm watching the salmon plop out of the water and, and you know, and the sunlight's catching their sort of uh, iridescent sort of uh, quality and, 
you know, and, and I remember saying to you, you may not remember, I said, Chris, we're coming back. And you looked at me. And I could see. Now, part of it was, how, would, how the hell would you know? But no, <laughs> but it was Braytac. It was Tony. So uh -huh. it was, no, how do you know? I said, look, we're coming back. Well, how do you know? I said, well, look, even the salmon are jumping out of the river to get that. a look at us. When we shoot. <laughs> I and we shoot. And laugh. Uh, and as I recall, we had a really wonderful ride. For some reason, we got a ride back in a car. Uh, uh, we got a ride back, and you had someone must have, you know, uh, given you a bottle or something. Mm -hmm. So we had a couple of drinks in the back seat. I remember of the car. that. Chris, yeah. Yeah. no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. But uh, you know, honestly, to take your uh, to take your power as an actor as a regular on a series, and then extend it into what you yes. did in terms of your writing. Mm. I mean, yes. you know, that's most people don't thing. do that. Oh, uh, that uh, you're so welcome. Yeah. yeah. And told me a lot about you. Tony so. and I are old journeyman actors, and years ago in Hollywood, I mean, up until recently, uh, there was there wasn't that inclusion with you know you were just the new kid on a block with series yeah. regulars, and uh, there wasn't that much to do with you. But that was the magic of uh, SG One. <clears throat> was the love that was on the set. I mean, mm -hmm. that everyone really uh, included each other and and appreciated the teamwork. Mm -hmm. And Stargate was a really well-oiled machine as far as everything. I don't think there was a night when I was working it didn't go past seven o'clock. Right. It was done so well and so efficiently. And I think uh, the regular cast had so much to do mm -hmm. with that because everybody, uh, was there for the same purpose, uh, to have a good time and to do the best job they could do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I appreciated that, Chris, thank you. Well, no, we thank you. You know, people um, always say it seems like, you know, you guys have such an extent, not just, not just the main cast, but the extended cast, and that you guys uh, have and continue to have such good relationships. And, but that's because of you guys, because, mm -hmm. The reason that you guys were brought back was because of who you were. And uh, people didn't know, but the producers would ask, and they would watch the dailies and see mm -hmm. who got along and who, who mm -hmm. did have that natural camaraderie mm -hmm. uh, 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 with us. And, and they would ask, well, how, how, how is this person? Mm -hmm. Oh, great got brought back mm -hmm. you know so it it was by design mm -hmm. um, that um, you guys were st and still part of this great Stargate world uh, because you presented yourselves a as part of it you got you guys like slipped in so we effortlessly right, we we did. <laughs> and you know right. the the other thing <clears throat> is Stargate which is the uh, recurring show I have done <clears throat> the most episodes on, they never told you it was a recurring. Mm. They never told me it was a recurring. No. Mm. You know, and generally I always learn that when they tell you it's a recurring up front, as often as not, they're trying to get you for less money. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. They're trying to say there's going to be more. And right. Stargate never said that. No. It just mm. happened really, really mm -hmm. naturally. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, and... You know, when you run 10 years, uh, like SG-1 did, you see eventually they can, and I'll say, they can weed out any assholes. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. Unless they're actors. And Unless they're us. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? No, but I mean, but the, I, I'm getting to the point where, uh, you know, uh, that Carmen and yourself are talking about, which is the, the crew. Mm -hmm. You know, how just how smooth it mm -hmm. ran. And I always loved it. Because when I came back, they were just so welcoming, mm. and they, and, you know, and it was just, hey, Tony, great to see. You. And then I'd always see, I'd always see a second wave go to their face. And what it meant was, oh, Tony's back. Excuse me, I don't know if we can speak this way. <laughs> Tony's, Tony's back in town with T Tilk and Braytac. Oh, we're going to a gravel pit. Right. <laughs> we're going to be out in the gravel pit in the heat. So you can see, because we shot at every yes, single yes, gravel pit yes, in uh, in yes, uh, British did. Columbia. Yeah. You know, to to. Expand on that. What did you think of, of the armor? See, I, you know, I, I had a grudge against you for a long time, so I got <laughs> smart and just got on your team and just started saying, 
I, I want armor like like Braytex. Because <laughs> your armor was so much more comfortable Absolutely. than everyone else's. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, my, my armor and as uh, Peter uh, Peter Delawis would say, my Jafamica. Yeah. Peter Peter Delawis. Yeah, yeah, it was. You know, and I, I will say this about that armor. It, it was a bear, even even mine. Uh, but you always when you took it off after twelve, fourteen hours, mm -hmm. you always felt you know, you're ready for the night right, because right. Uh, and the worst was the boots. I don't know about you, mm -hmm. but it was. Mm -hmm. And finally, because I used to have the big lace-up guys with mm -hmm. the cover. And when we did the episode that was in the Japanese, um, it was the Zen episode. Maternal where, Instinct. Yeah, Maternal yeah. Instinct, where yeah. I'm, uh, you know, I'm thinking, I keep talking about death and, mm -hmm. and all of those things. If I remove the symbiote within me, I would die. You cannot start the journey with it inside you. So a Jaffa cannot seek oneness before he is willing to die. When the mind is freed, the body is no longer required. I sense you are not ready to meet Omadasala. I am not ready to die. But I take solace in the fact that journey is ahead of me. I had to sit with uh, Terry Chen. Mm -hmm. uh, Terry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, who's a great guy. You know, and... Uh, and there we were, and they realized I had to sit in a meditative state. Well, I got the big boots on, mm. you can't do that. So for that episode, they designed lighter boots with a sort of a, a, a zip, or no, they were clips. Uh. And, and once I wore those, I said, let's keep, and then my outfit was set. Right. So maybe right. that was the fourth season. <laughs> then I was ready going in. Uh, but, you still uh, have your outfit? I do. I, you kept it? I wear it, I wear it on, on the annual Stargate day. Oh, yeah. So I haven't been invited to yeah, that. Yet. You're not going to be giving him no. a call saying, <laughs> no. and, you're have gonna, the, you're and have the boots on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I had, what was that? Uh, cow's stomach lining. Pig skin. Pig, pig skin. Pig, pig lining. Well, there's an Italian dish that's stomach lining. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, 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 the, there was one that's called soufrite. Well, soufrite is chicken yeah. liver. Yeah, but, but yeah. this was, but it was actually cow's stomach lining, and then there was pig. I had two yeah. uniforms. Yeah. One was kind of whatever, but <laughs> they were well, elegant. Those uniforms yeah. were elegant, actually. Yeah, they, they were, were intellectual, you know. But I realized, you know, I uh, to change the subject. Forgive me. Uh, I think I came on the second year was my first show, and, and soon after that, I went to my first convention, mm -hmm. and it was in Paris, mm -hmm. you know, God, uh, Stargate convention, and uh, you were there, Don Davis, mm -hmm. yes, the, the finest Don. gentleman that ever yeah, lived, that's yeah. the truth. great man, mm -hmm. great, a fine artist, uh, Don was amazing, I mm -hmm. loved Don, mm -hmm. uh, Terrell, who was so much mm -hmm. fun. And the three of us were in Paris, mm -hmm. and you were with your lovely wife, and I think we went to the Folies Berger. Folies Berger. Folies right? Berger. Yeah. It was a great night. Mm -hmm. And we come back to our little place off the Champs-Élysées, uh, some hotel. Mm -hmm. Can't sleep. Two o'clock in the morning, we decided to take a walk down the Champs-Élysées. Mm -hmm. You, Terrell, Dawn, and I. Mm -hmm. And it's two o'clock in the morning in Paris, and there's some people and we turn a corner and I hear someone say, Monsieur Tilk, Monsieur Tilk. And then people coming around, Monsieur Tilk. And, <laughs> and I, I realized the impact of, of, of the show at that point that these anonymous people weren't even at the convention, walking down the Champs Elysees and everybody was recognizing Chris. And it was, it was a, a moment for me to appreciate, you know, that uh, we had, Reach so many people, mm. apparently all over the world. Mm. I even got a Monsieur Jacob down the road mm. one. <laughs> you got about kind of, but it was uh, it was an eye opener. And, uh, because we were on uh, we were on premium TV at first. Yes, right. And Showtime. Sci-Fi yes. Yes. eventually uh, created, so it was a limited. But in in England, in France, and you yeah. were on regular. Yeah, the European yeah. distribution was 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 uh, very different because America, we were only on. Right. Showtime, but uh, they uh, were on different free-to-air right. uh, yeah. networks in Europe. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And so, uh, yeah, Stargate was for years one of the one of the biggest hits over there. Well, yeah. till this day, I to, mean, I yeah, think Europe yeah. Is, is still. Yeah. This box has a signature in it we can recognize. Just send it through the gate, and we'll know you want to contact us. 
Thank you. Come, Tomaka. 